full stack developers are in high demand. Companies prefer full stack developer because they can work on both front end and back end development. And with so many web based products being launched every day, there are so many startups working on different products. The demand for full stack developers is the highest in the market right now. And that's the reason you see a lot of full stack development courses on almost all the online training platforms. Now, if you want to become a full stack developer, there's a certain roadmap, there are certain technologies that you have to learn. And in this video, I'll share everything from start till the end. Now, this will be a bit longer video because I want to explain everything. And if you are serious about learning full stack development, you should get all the information that you need. I'll share about all the different technologies, programming languages, why you need to learn them and what are the different options available for all those things. This full stack development roadmap will help you if you are starting from scratch and you don't have any prior knowledge about anything and you still want to become a full stack developer. So watch this video from starting till the end to understand the entire life cycle of how the product is built and what are the different components that you need to understand and learn to become a successful full stack developer. It all starts with HTML and CSS. Yes, because you want to become a full stack developer, you'll be developing a lot of web applications. So you must know the language using which the data is displayed on internet. Yes, HTML is the markup language that is used to format data to display them on web pages in a nice and structured way. And CSS comes into play to beautify those web pages. So to understand how web pages are created, how they are styled, how data is formatted to be displayed on the websites, you have to have knowledge of HTML and CSS. I generally recommend to every beginner, even if you want to get into software development or front-end development, Actually, it is necessary, but even if for software development or DevOps or mobile app development, I generally recommend everyone to learn or start with HTML and CSS because that gives you an idea of how, you know, data is displayed on the web pages and how the internet works in general. Now, when you start learning CSS, you get to know about different frameworks, UI frameworks like Bootstrap, Tailwind. You don't have to worry about them initially, just focus on the core CSS concepts because once you have those, you, it will be very easy for you to transition and use any of these you know, UI frameworks developed for CSS. Once you're done with HTML and CSS comes JavaScript. Yes, JavaScript plays a very vital role in the full stack development stack. It can be used for front end and for back end development both. Now, first talking about the front end part of JavaScript. Once you have a web page that is created using HTML and CSS, you can make that web page interactive using JavaScript. Yes, you can do various computational tasks, perform validations if you have some HTML form, you can make changes to the web page layout or structure or colors based on user events like click event or if the user hovers over something or if the user start typing something. You can even use JavaScript to get data from the server so that you can show them on the web pages. JavaScript is so popular these days that almost almost 67% of the developers said in the Stack Overflow Developer Survey of 2022 that they use JavaScript and almost 50-52% freshers said that we prefer JavaScript over any other programming language. So you can understand the popularity of JavaScript. Now when you learn JavaScript initially you can stick to the front end part of it you know, make sure you learn HTML, CSS, and then JavaScript just to handling the front end, various events handling, how the browser works with a JavaScript, how it interacts with the DOM do document object model, which is nothing but the, you know, uh, HTML tags that are uh, rendered in the browser. So once you have the basic understanding of how JavaScript works with the front end, then maybe you can think of moving towards the back end part of it. But we will cover that aspect of JavaScript later when we talk about backend programming languages. So once you have the knowledge of HTML, CSS and JavaScript, you are in this position that you can try making different products and different projects, simple web pages, simple UI design, simple functional projects like to-do application or some you know complex uh, UI clones as well of different popular websites. Now to become a successful front-end developer, you also have to have knowledge of the internet, how the internet works. Because every web application, every website is hosted on the internet and if there's no internet, then I don't think anything can work and there would be any use of full stack developers, right? So you must have understanding of how HTTP protocol works, how request response are treated, how you can check in the developer tools in the network section that how requests are being sent, the responses are being received, what is header, what all information goes through the header and receives back. What does domain name servers or DNS means? What are domain names? How you can host a website? You can start with basic, you know, a shared hosting as well. That's also fine. This is just to build a proper understanding of how a website goes from zero to one. So you start with an HTML web page, you write CSS to make it beautiful, some JS to make it functional, 
and then you put it online using a shared hosting and make it available using a domain name so that anyone can access that website from their browser by visiting a domain name. So once you're done with this understanding, then you can say, okay, you know, I know the basics of how web development works. Up until this step, you learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, basics of internet. You don't have to worry or, you know, confuse yourself by different libraries and frameworks that you get to see. You'll see a lot of frameworks and libraries being written in JavaScript, but I would recommend you to stick with core JavaScript and in CSS, stick with core CSS. Don't start using Bootstrap or any other CSS frameworks as of now. Once you're done with these basics, then maybe you can think of, okay, you know, you want to take a complex project. Then you can think of taking a CSS framework, but not a JavaScript framework as of now. Next in the line of becoming a full stack developer comes the backend, for which you have to have knowledge of a general programming language. It can be Python, it can be Java, it can be something as modern as Rust or Alexi, or it can be JavaScript itself. Now, one benefit of using JavaScript on backend as well is that, you know, you just have to understand how Node.js works, how you can write code using Node.js and the basics or the fundamentals of the programming language stays same. So if you're learning JavaScript for front end, it will mostly remain same in the backend as well. So you don't have to get into the hassle of learning a new program. But if you want to learn a new programming language, there are multiple options. Like I said, Python is there. In Python, you can learn Django framework to write good web applications. You can even use Flask just to create the backend and you keep the front end separated from the backend. If you want to learn Java, there's Spring Boot. You can even use PHP, although it's a little too outdated, but if you want to, you can use it. In a programming language that you want to use for writing the backend, you have to know all the basics like, you know, variables, data types, conditionals, loops, classes, if it supports object-oriented programming or inheritance, then various different data structures that the programming language supports. You should have an understanding of the various basic data structures like stack, linked list, queue, etc. And you should also, you know, if you want to get into hardcore backend development, you should also solve some algorithms because that will help you eventually as you progress in your career. Having the knowledge of algorithms will make you write good backend code. Now, the backend programming language is not just about writing the logic. It's also about, you know, interacting with the front end and with the database. That takes us to two more things that you have to learn to become a full stack developer. One is REST APIs and the other one is database. So let's start with REST services first. Now, if you have a website that is hosted on the internet and I open it up in my browser and you have a database that has all the data that will be loaded in this web application. Now, how will this website interact with the data? There has to be some way for this website to interact with the server and get the data back. Now, this path is created through REST API. REST services provides a way for communication between the front end and the back end. So the front end can send a request to the back end saying, okay, you know, this is the kind of data that I want to show to my user. And the back end will communicate with the database and send the data back as part of the HTTP response, which the front end will use and create the web page. So you have to know the basics of REST services and how whichever programming language you use, how to write REST APIs using that programming language. You also have to have the understanding of how that programming language communicates with the database, how the connection is set up, how different databases work. I'll talk about databases in the next section. So up until now, we have covered HTML, CSS, JavaScript, basics of internet, backend, REST API, and the next comes databases. Now there are two types of databases. I've covered a separate video talking about both the different types of databases. But just to you know give you a refresher, two types of databases are SQL and NoSQL databases. SQL databases are relational, they store data in tables, the data is structured, whereas in case of NoSQL, they don't have tables, they have documents to store data and you can store anything in the database. It stored data in form of documents, so there's no structure that you have to follow. There are no columns that you have to define in your table that, okay, these are the columns that will store my data in the table. No, you can store any data in a NoSQL database. So once you're done with all this, you can say that you have completed all the core requirements of becoming a full stack developer. But there are a few things more that you should focus upon and learn to become successful in the professional world. The first thing is Linux and a knowledge of cloud services. Yes, almost 97% of the cloud hosting servers are using the Linux operating system. So you should know how to use Linux operating system how to do various configurations, how to run various services, various commands that will enable you to use Linux server comfortably. When it comes to cloud services, you should know about at least one cloud service. It can be AWS, DigitalOcean, Azure or any other cloud service. Then the next thing is security. Yes, because you're becoming a full stack developer, you should have the understanding of the basics of security of an application. 
both on the front end and on the back end. So you should be familiar with the concepts like SSL certificate, how you can configure HTTPS for your website, how you can prevent XSS attacks, proper validations both on the front end and on the back end, cores, CSRF token, etc. You can even try using Burp Suit. Install Burp Suit and try using it to explore various network calls, how you can repeat various network calls, how you can exploit any you know particular network call while hitting a website, while hitting an HTTP request. So Burp Suit is a very good tool for a full stack developer now obviously it is meant for security researchers but if you're a full stack developer who wants to become good in what you do then you must explore burp suit as well after learning all this you can start comfortably working on different projects and once you start working on projects you can explore css and javascript frameworks like for css you can explore bootstrap or tailwind and for javascript you can explore react.js for creating responsive front ends or express.js for routing and rest services etc and with that we come to the end of the full stack developer roadmap i know it was a long roadmap but i think in 2023 if you want to become a good full stack developer if you want to secure a job for yourself and if you want to excel in your career then this is what you must learn you must have understanding of all these things that i've listed in this particular roadmap and if you think it's too much to learn all by yourself and you want some help in learning all this then i have something for you i've started a full stack development course the batch one has already started from 10th of june it's going great and i'm starting a new batch from 8th of july yes from 8th of July, it would be a weekday batch with three classes, one on Monday, one on Wednesday, and one on Friday, 1.5 hours each. The overall course will be of two and a half months. It will have 27 live classes and I will cover everything that I have discussed in this particular roadmap video. So if you want to become a full stack developer, if you want to start your career in full stack development, if you are in a different career right now and you want to switch to full stack development, then this is your chance. So do check out the link in the description below for the course details. And if you enjoyed this video, if this video helped you in understanding the full stack development development roadmap then give it a thumbs up subscribe to the youtube channel and see you in the next video